This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Thank you for joining this morning. It's time for us to pray together. God is good and His mercy endures forever. His everlasting love. Are you live with us through any one of these mediums, Tan Radio, Facebook page, our social networks? Tell us where you're listening or watching from. Send it to the number, the prayer line number that's right above the side of my head. It's time for us to pray. God is good and it doesn't matter what you're going through. He loves you and he wants to show you that he loves you. And so as we pray together this morning, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter where you are. You can pray together with me fervently in the Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, stir yourself up in new tongues. Otherwise, pray in your understanding, but yet influenced, controlled by the Holy Spirit. We bless your name, Father. Thank you for this privilege you've given to us. Hallelujah. Thank you for your working word. Thank you for making us beautiful. Thank you for ministering to us. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for loving us. We bless your name. We pray this morning as we get into your word that your children will be revived, that they will be blessed that they will be used as instruments of righteousness, instruments of peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray as we get into the word, that your word will revive us, that your word will strengthen us, that it will produce result this moment as we fellowship together. Oh, we remember those who don't have the same opportunity with us. We pray that you give them this opportunity that you gave to us this opportunity of fellowship, this opportunity to know you, to receive strength from you, despite the conditions in the world, despite the situations where people are. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Remember, trouble spots around the world, bloodshed, confusion. Leaders don't know what exactly and which way to lead their nation. Disaster, causing death. Let there be life. Let there be love. I speak your comfort upon families that have been affected by disasters. I speak your answer to that woman, to that man, a boy, that girl, that they will receive answers through your people, your church. 
o perfil em Israel. O Shale Kataba Shataka Boya. O perfil em Israel. That you continue to keep them, sustain them, bless them, increase them, protect them. You restore peace to them. Total peace. We pray for the remnants who are still waiting for the Messiah. We pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, that they will understand the scriptures you gave to them and receive the Messiah, Yeshua. Our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, the time has come to receive instruction for your engrafted word that is able to save our souls. Feel us today. Renew our mind, renew our thinking, change our lives. We receive revelation, instruction, intervention from your word by faith. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining in, saints. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wherever you are joining in from, you grab that Bible of yours as we get into the Word this morning. And let's make a confession of faith through a song. I have a wonderful treasure, the gift of God without measure, and so we shall travel together, my Bible and I. I guess it is true to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As we pray together this morning, I want to read a few scriptures for you. You know, we can do a lot of things, but when it comes to prayer, a lot of people um, excuse themselves, give reasons why they are not able to pray. I'm not a prayer warrior. I don't belong to the prayer group in my church. I am a word man. Uh, I can fast, but uh, when it comes to prayer, uh, Pastor, I'm not in the prayer band. And um, it's not my gift to pray. It is my gift to win souls. We can just go on and on and on and on and talk, speak so many things. We can speak so many things. We can speak so, so many things. But the fact remains that what prayer will do for you the Word of God will not do. We were taught that. And that's a classic truth that never changed. What prayer would do for you, the Word of God will not do. What the Word of God will do for you, prayer will not do. Parallel truth that gives these wonderful benefits, they will not replace one another. Prayer won't replace the Word, neither will the Word replace prayer. You cannot say I'm very fervent in the word, so um, that is going to put up for my prayer life. No. And so we, we we also come into situations where we we are not able to pray because probably the situation is heavy on us. The situation is asking us and demanding from us. Where is your faith now? Where is your God now? Your confessions you've made. Where is it now? See, sometimes our situation tells us that. And because our situation tells us that, it's significant that during those times, fellowship with God is not in negotiation at all. Those times when the situation seems to stare you and shake you. And sometimes we know what we're going to get in. 
like Jesus Christ, when he was going into the cross, when he was going to the cross for us, he knew and he went to pray. And the Bible tells us how he prayed. The Bible told us he prayed fervently. One of the things I believe God brought me from my bed this morning to speak to you is to be fervent in your prayers. You have to be fervent in your prayers. You step into this new month that you're about to get in a couple of days. Let it be a, let it be a month of prayer for you. Give yourself to prayer. There are different types of prayer. There are prayers which we pray that helps us. That helps our spiritual life. Now, all the prayers which we pray helps us, okay? Helps our spiritual life. But you see, there are some prayer that is channeled to benefit the individual who prays only. Whatever prayer you engage yourself, I'm talking about categories of prayer, petitions, requests, you know, intercession, thanksgiving, worship. Some people really do not know that there is prayer of worship. There is prayer of worship. The book of Psalms were written uh, by psalmists, and one of the most profound psalmists is David. And you need to understand, yesteryears for Israel, the book of Psalms is a song book. It's a song, it's a hymn book. So, a prayer of worship. You use the book of Psalms. And, and so many types of prayers, if you want to get into that, repentance, sanctification, fellowship, koinonia, you feel the very place of the Holy Spirit in your life and what God has called you to do. Prayer of confirmation, prayer of dedication. Now, prayer of confirmation, dedication, these are all different aspects and categories of prayer. And then we come to the wonderful one, the prayer of the Spirit. In other words, praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, I want to dwell on that for a while before we read a few scriptures. Praying in the Spirit does not give our understanding edification. However, it gives our spirit strength. He gives our spiritual eyes sight. He gives our spiritual ears the capacity to be sensitive to the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Prayer cannot be overemphasized, especially when you're in trouble. We should be prayed up. We should not be praying when we're in trouble about our trouble. We should be prayed up. We should live a spiritual life that is prayed up. What it means is, Jesus, whenever he takes a move or whenever he wants to do something, he doesn't pray in that thing. He prays before that. He wants to choose his disciples. Here he goes to pray, and he prays all night and comes out and chooses them. Now he doesn't. Uh, now when he wants to choose them, and he goes to pray, but he prays before. So we should always have a prayed-up life. You want to write your exams, pray before. You want to get married, pray before. You want to do a selection. You want to do a purchase. You want to buy a house, pray before. Should always be prayed up. It's not good for us to have when we're growing up. It's okay to have a prayer time. But after you've grown up, you should have a prayer life. So from a prayer time to a prayer life. A prayer time, we designate 
certain place, certain time of the day to pray. A prayer life, even though we also designate, we also put certain time and certain place to pray, but the prayer life, we are always in koinonia, fellowship, sharing with the Holy Spirit. We are always sharing and speaking to the Lord and praying in our subconsciousness. So there are times when we counsel couples, counsel families, counsel individuals. We pray for them while we are talking to them. The times when we share the word of God, we pray while we are sharing the word of God. We do. We have a designated time, and and we pray before we share the word of God. But as I'm speaking to you presently right now, I didn't pray. But most of the time, I pray while I'm sharing. Those who pray understand the strength that is in the spirit that cannot be accessed any other way. Those who pray fervently wax stronger and stronger in the spirit. The stronger you are in the spirit, the better off you are in the kingdom of God on earth. The stronger you are in the spirit, the, the stronger you become in the things of God. And prayer plays a very vital role for your spiritual vitality. Prayer. All right. This morning you're praying with me from wherever you are. So first I want to read Luke 18 verse 1. One of my very favorite. The way Jesus spoke in that verse, in that passage, it's very touching. And the way the writer describes and summarizes it in verse 1 is most touching. In verse 1, Luke's Gospel, chapter number 18. In verse 1, the scripture says, Now, he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Now, the writer, by the help of the Holy Spirit, summarizes all that Jesus wants to speak about a story of an unjust judge and a widow woman. Unjust judge, one who doesn't fear the Lord. Widow woman, one who do not have any help. Are you in that situation? Faced with things, wickedness of people, cruelty of man's heart, and you are helpless. Prayer is the way to get help. And so he told us a story of how this woman continually knocked on the door of this unjust fella, a judge, and asked for help. Asked for help. Help me. Avenge me. Help me. Judge my case. Help me. Help me. Every time she does it. And the Lord said something in verse number 8. Because the woman showed a continual effort for what she wanted. And now you need to understand, each time she goes, that unjust judge can tell a thousand lies. He's already unjust. So he can give her one lie to another lie. And tell her so many things. Verse 8. Now Jesus tells us. If we have such an attitude of the widow. Towards the unjust judge. That God is not unjust. He will respond to us. The widow continually knocked. If you complain more than you pray. You waste strength physical strength. If you talk more than you pray, you waste strength. There are experiences in prayer that cannot be put into words or described. If you assume that your prayer life is fine, you are deepening in your walk in the Spirit. How do you know those, who prayer those whose prayer lives are fervent? 
And how do you know those whose prayer lives are not? Those whose prayer lives are fervent, you can see the fruit of the Spirit at the surface of their life. Those whose prayer life aren't, the gift of the Spirit is undercover. Let me make it a little more simpler. The gift of the Spirit has two branches, like I've always said. One is gifts of service. Another is gifts for living. Gifts of service, you know it very well, power gifts, utterance gifts, and the like. Now, when you go to power gifts for leaving, we now talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So these things, these gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can use to characterize. First and foremost, a gift that we have received can only be enjoyed by usage. And one of the ways you use the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not to manifest it like a circus, like a presentation. Tell me your name, I tell you who you are. It's not to manifest it like that. It's to have it by living. You forgive, you love, you have joy when there is sorrow. You take some very stupid nonsense for a long time. It's called long suffering. And all the like as named and mentioned in Galatians chapter number 5. So when you are trying to prove things in the natural with your strength, it's an indicator that your prayer life is weak. When you're trying to prove things in your own strength in the natural, so it's one indicator that your prayer life is weak. Trying to prove something. Don't live a life trying to prove to someone that you're successful. Don't live a life trying to prove to someone that you're correct. Don't live a life trying to prove to someone that they're wrong. Truth outlives lies. It's just like that. It's natural. Truth outlives lies. In verse number 8, Luke's Gospel, chapter number 18, Jesus said something that we should really pay attention to. Our Lord said, I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Let me read the King James for you. You will love that. In verse number It says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Persistent. Persistent. Faith that won't take no for an answer. Your faith is not shown by argument. Your faith is shown by the pressing you do in prayer. In the line of prayer, James 5, 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer. Effectual, effective, fervent, continuous. I, whatever efforts that you make for anything in your life, when it is continuous, will eventually have a breakthrough whatever efforts in your life. So, James 5, 16 said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Effectual fervent. Effectual, biblical. Effectual, not based on your feelings. Effectual. 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 We can, we can fight, fate fight in prayer. The book of First Timothy tells us in chapter number 6, fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life of which you were apprehended fight the good fight of faith and so you can fight spiritually in prayer so so many things we gain 
for having a committed father in prayer life so many things you gain many things too numerous to mention you gain when you pray and <clears throat> those of you who think uh, prayer is a religious thing and you just want to hear the word of God and that's it prayer is not a religious thing prayer is a living reality of fellowship with God it's not a religious thing another fact that you should know prayer is labor now some of you who may not understand what labor is labor doesn't mean you are cleaning the streets labor doesn't mean you have no respect labor is an act labor is an act it's an action of doing something that's labor what type of labor then the words you say after the word labor would determine what type of labor is that so we have labor market so when you say labor everyone in the nations everyone in the nation are laborers so what kind of labor do they do the word that comes after it or before it will will describe the kind of labor so so many people think doctors are not laborers so many people think that engineers are not laborers they think they are professionals everyone that works is a laborer there are cheap laborers there are different types of labor the president of the nation is a laborer because he works if you work you are a laborer the scripture tells us in the book of Proverbs in every labor there is profit so don't think you are not a laborer don't think that the man there who picks the dirt he is a laborer and you are an accountant or you are a pastor or you are a teacher an educator or you are a scientist a doctor you are a laborer every work you do is labor the housewife as they say we prefer to call them homemakers the housewife as they say she's a laborer the politician is a laborer So you understand that concept, okay? I won't spend time talking about that. There is something that is called prayer labor or laboring in prayer. Let's see that in Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 12. You can labor in prayer. So prayer is a labor. Prayer is not a cheap act. It's a labor. It's a, it's a very uh, profitable, honorable labor. So every time you labor, the scripture tells us there is profit. There is profit. So for those who do not labor, obviously, the opposite is the case. Loss. No profit. All right. In Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 12, I'm still reading the NASB translation. It says, Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. And he continues to speak about the strength of God. In verse 11. He continues to speak about the strength of God. And he says, Strengthening with all power according to his glorious mind for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience and joy, joyously laboring in prayer is very fruitful when you understand that your prayer is laboring is fruitful 
is going to be fruitful. So every prayer you pray, we have Fridays. We pray for our loved ones. We have, we have, we have um, last days of the months. We pray and seek the face of God. And we have prayer meetings. How do you commit yourself to these prayer meetings? Pastors have said before, I didn't understand that time. Until I became a pastor, I understood. Pastor has said before, when you when you have any meeting, you see God's people flock into it. Miracle meeting, Thanksgiving meeting, worship meeting, so many meetings. But when you have prayer meeting, if they come, they are coming to receive prayer. They are not coming to pray. And most of the time, you can ask the pastors, these, these ones who attend prayer meetings, they are expecting to be prayed for. That's why. They are not expecting to go there to labor. I don't know how many believers who attend prayer meetings go there to labor. To understand, I'll give you the example of a woman who's giving birth. A woman who's giving birth, she pushes herself. She gathers her strength. And she uses it to bring out the child that is in her womb. The process is hectic. The process is serious. But she doesn't give up. She 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 wants to see that child. She labors to see that child. And sometimes she needs to scream. Not because the screaming really helps her, but the pain she goes through. You know, in prayer, it is similar to the birth pangs, Galatians, 19. My little children whom I travel in bed pangs again, that Christ be formed in you. The Apostle Paul says. That Christ be formed in you. You know, a lot of times we we'll complain about a lot of things people do, Christians do, but I've really prayed enough. I speak to our church folks in our church every Friday. I remind them to be committed to the ministry of prayer in the family. And I can tell you this, everyone who's committed to the ministry of prayer in the family will come back testifying of what the Lord is doing in their family. Every time you excuse yourself from praying, you rob yourself from being empowered. Every time you think you're praying, when you are not praying, you're deceiving yourself. When you want to see arrogant Christians, when you want to see Christians who are missing the mark, who are turning away from the Lord, they would say, should I pray for you to see? Do I have to pray for you to see? I am praying. In my heart, I am praying. Well, if all you pray in your heart, if all your prayer is in your heart, you are not praying. If you are a human being, we will see that you are a human being. You don't need to show that you are a human being. The scripture tells us there is time for everything. So if you are a praying husband, there will be time for you to give yourself to prayer in the house. Someone say, I'm not super spiritual. You don't need to be super spiritual to give yourself to prayer. You are already spiritual. God is a spirit and created us in his image and likeness. You are super spiritual. If you are talking about those who are going all about and making everything spiritual, that is out of context. You don't need to be like that. So you don't even need to say it. 
you are already spiritual. So if you if you are saying that, well, um, I'm praying, but my wife doesn't know that I'm praying. I'm praying, but my husband doesn't know that I'm praying. No, no, no. When you eat, don't we know you eat? When you sleep, don't we know you sleep? When you talk, don't we know you talk? Then what is wrong for us to know when you pray that you pray? Or that you're praying? It's a honorable act. It's a labor. It's an honorable act. It's a labor. It's something that you should be glad about. It's not something that you should you should be sad about. We talk about the strength of God in Colossians 1. In Colossians 4, it talks about in name. It said Epaphras, who is one in Colossians 4.12. It says, Epaphras, who is one of you, servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you might stand perfect and complete. Hallelujah. That you might stand perfect and complete. Every time you cry and pray for your family members, it's not a dry tears and it's not wasted tears. Every time you pray for your colleagues, you pray for the nation, you pray for the leaders of the nation, you are accomplishing the ministry of a priest as God's calling is upon the life of his people, kings and priests. How can we receive forgiveness without prayer? How can we be sanctified without prayer? Now what I mean by that, I really don't mean a religious way that you are not clean without prayer. What I mean is separation. How can you be separated from this world without prayer? Is it possible? Let this new month be a month of prayer for you. Give yourself fervently and let the Lord speak to you. Pastor, whenever I pray, I sleep. Sleep and wake up and continue praying. Pastor, whenever I want to pray, that's when all these things come into my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Continue praying. Pastor, I'm only waiting for the Holy Spirit to fill me. When He fills me, I want to start a prayer band in our church. Oh, I want to join the prayer band in our church. If you don't use what you have, you will not get what you want. Use what you have. What you have, the Holy Spirit is in you. Use that. Pray fervently. If all your prayer is request, you're going to be frustrated a long time. If all your prayer is request. God wants to use you in prayer. And until God use you in prayer, He will not be able to really trust you in any other arm of the ministry. God wants to use you in prayer. Give yourselves to prayer. My pastor used to tell me, give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to the Holy Spirit. A word is enough for the wise. It's time for us to pray. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter what your need might be. We pray fervently and for the interactive session that I told you that we're going to be having this month, look out for it. Look out for the update for it. It's interactive sections, sessions are for prayers. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Whew, 
Thank you, Lord. The All-Sufficient One. The All-Sufficient One. He is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. He is El Shaddai. The God of plenty, the all-sufficient one, the all-sufficient one, he is more than enough, he is more than enough. He's more than enough. His name is El Shaddai. He's the God of plenty. The all-sufficient one. The all-sufficient one. He is more than enough. Marido Sarabaye is more, more than enough for you. He is more than enough. Marido Sarabaye is more than enough for me. He is more than enough, oh, more than enough. He is more than enough. He is El Shaddai, the God of plenty, the all-sufficient one. He is the all-sufficient one. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. Marebo shakte ra gradesh tu Karigando Grescoja Zedegi Banda Lagri East Kosha Stobra Atama Lamana Madebos Katabari J. Pakusa Kaba Lava Debo Koja Degri Di Kasapola Manamans Kopra Ashtari Nemada Mako Baston Shustimbri Ikas Tak Shabatna Akte Kostugide Bradon Koloma Anxian Stamara Mahakabari Arikatobre Ain Sakshisti Keteke Sora Manaman Kaba Shari Malikoza kateka dugri ikitos ken shtombere gede pratha la baka shateka son terabana makla ashtija koto baragari. Ale kate mamanto bashate kara maman sakate bradisha kara. Bora bala makate boroba kasakte kashona mono monoma kopo soksha sti bradola bra akatama andirabari. Ure de soksha stone mara maka para mari bose kajuze katengre dekan sabolo manama shata. Ikere bado bek mo shore menge digra dado mando ba shakte ko sada bade. Meri seko to brandeer gal bato seko shtom banda la bade bo kala bade. Are bato section stipra akshuk sendere bek mo soko shondo ba akham malagare. Rikra do zik jo khatamarama kamba shakte ko soko ba da bande bradiza ko shto ko bara. Ara kada mare bok mo shokor banda brede ka seksu sekere bara bade. Ale ka soka shono ma makta ka sakada bade. Bore me ka stok shok tekere me ka ndure ka tle ka salaman mando be ka shure gede bala ma ko seker bara. Lehira do ka ba shakte mara ma do be sok shinje gede bala ma ka pata bade. E ka to bade ma ka shti ka to se ka tera mando bala ma ma kade. Hale kato mere keshti ka sapo ka pala maash ke riba. Ikra do ze katle ka stoma jon te ke te ka salama nama ka ba ju se ka te lag le lik lak sok sha stombre de ka se ka digare. Rado ka pash kana ma maan so ke ba shure kre e se ka shara bare. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your presence. We bless your name. You know, I feel that it's time to give ourselves a prayer this morning. And and this this is this is a public platform where we reach out to everyone. So thank you, Lord. So we we cannot I cannot continue to pray here now. So I, I am leaving you in the attitude of prayer. We're going to be praying here, so wherever you are, you have to pray there for another one hour. One hour. Why one hour, Pastor? Uh, the Lord said, can't you watch with me for one hour? So you can ask him, Lord, why one hour? He'll tell you. He'll tell you why one hour. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining in. It's, it's time for you to go into prayer, laboring in prayer. If you've received the gifts of speaking in new tongue, oh, you're blessed. It's time to pray in new tongues. If you haven't, you shall receive. Pray in your understanding as well. I pray for all your gifts, all your offerings, all your support to the ministry. I decree God's word over them. You are blessed. May he increase you this time of the pandemic. May his favor never depart from you. May his face always shine upon you. Every gift song may multiply, may multiply in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Next one hour, and that is, you're going to finish praying somewhere 9.30. Clear that place, place your knee, lay down, sit down, pace the floor, however you want it. One hour. God bless you. See you next time. Satisfy the human heart. Money cannot satisfy the human heart. Pleasure cannot satisfy the human heart. Comfort cannot satisfy the human heart. Nothing entirely in this world can satisfy the human heart. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. God's Word made flesh. And He walked the earth. And He faced the things that we're facing, passed through the difficulties that we passed through, and was without sin, the Bible says. He was without sin. He was sinless. The seed of God's Word became flesh. And He died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And the Bible says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus. You can call upon that name wherever you are and you can be saved today. If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life by praying this prayer. O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. I now have Christ dwelling in me. I am a new creation. Hallelujah. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations. You are now a child of God. To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please get in touch with us by calling any of the numbers displayed on your screen or visit our website. Nothing entirely in this world can satisfy the human.